Hello everybody. Welcome to the shop. What we have in front of us today is the uh, crankshaft and flywheels to my 2 horsepower Stover KA hit or miss engine. Um, I uh, got this new uh, crankshaft and flywheel set here because the old crank was uh, in pretty bad shape. It was bent and rotted and out around and everything and the flywheels weren't in good shape either. So I got everything. I got the journals all cleaned up and what I'm doing now while it's on the bench I'm setting the uh, I'm shimming the connecting rod bearing. I'm gonna have to shim the main bearings while it's in the engine of course but I figured this would be a good opportunity to show you guys how I shim Babbitt bearings. Uh, feel free to leave a comment if uh, you disagree with something because I I'm just kind of figuring out as I go along but it's worked for me. I've done this on a on a one other engine and I've also shimmed the main on this before with the old crank before I knew how bad it was. So anyway, um, here's the connecting rod. And I have a new uh, Babbitt bearing put in it. I didn't have to pour these bearings. I purchased them from a website. And here's the rod cap. They came in, they came in uh, pairs. It's a machined Babbitt, and it just presses right in. You need to modify the Babbitt a little bit. It's a little um, undersized in some spots and oversized in some other spots, which is better than having too little material to work with. So I got these to fit just right. Don't pound them in. You're going to break them. They're pretty brittle. Um, and I was able to find these because this is a pretty common engine. You're going to have to pour bearings if you have a more uncommon engine or something larger or more oddball. Anyway, the way Babbitt bearings work is they're on there, they're clamped down, it's spinning away, and after a while the Babbitt wears down before the steel does, and then you start getting some slop. So what you can do you can take some of the shims out between the two bearing halves and tighten it down again and that'll bring the uh, two worn pieces of Babbitt together a little bit closer and retighten your bearing. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good setup. Um, So anyway, let's get on with it. Um, what you're going to need to do is make some shims. If you guys are interested enough, I'll make a video on how to make shims, but I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, this is what a shim looks like. Usually, if you're working with a complete engine, there'll be at least one thick steel shim on either side, and that's what I took out of um, either this engine or a different one, I think it was my CT2, I was shimming that bearing too, I took that steel one out and used that as a pattern to make these brass ones. And I made a couple different thicknesses, I had some different thickness uh, brass stock lying around. And what I did, I sandwiched a couple layers of brass together, drilled a hole through all of them, clamped them all together and formed them and filed and sawed them all together so I can make, um, you know, five, ten shims at a time. And it's important to note that the shim, when it's on the uh, bearing half like that, it covers the Babbitt bearing. It's not away from the Babbitt bearing like that. And that prevents the Babbitt from rotating and spinning between the Babbitt and the either the connecting rod in this case or the cap. 
but you want to make sure that this surface doesn't get too close to the journal on the crankshaft because then you'll start scratching it which is why I made these out of brass so if they do touch for whatever reason it's brass it's not going to hurt anything so this is just sort of a guess and check um, procedure so I'm going to start with two thick shims place one on each side And I'm just going to see where that gets me. Um, also, I before I even took any of this apart, I took a file and marked a cross between the connecting rod and the cap. So this cap doesn't get oriented the wrong way. So my mark is aligning with the other mark, and I'll... Slide this in. Tighten that. I can tell already this is going to be too tight. Even if I just tighten this by, by hand and try to rotate the connecting rod, I can feel I can feel drag. And if I were to tighten these even more. Um, it would drag even more. But I can see, maybe you can see too, that shim is wobbling. So it's not even anywhere close to being tight. Which means we need to add more shims. Or I need to add more shims and you can just watch me. Of these. It's kind of boring work to make these shims, but uh, just pound them all out in one night. Because I'm all out of thick shims, so I gotta go to my next size down. Put two of those there. good to have a number of thin shims as opposed to one or two thick shims because that's e that means it's easier to maintain the bearing as it wears. Say in 10 years when the bearing starts getting sloppy, I'll pull the cap off, take out one thin shim, put it back together and it'll be just right. But if I have to, but if I take out a big thick, you know, 30 or 40 thou thick shim, it's going to be too tight and I'm going to have to stop what I'm doing and make more shims, thin shims, and play around with getting the tightness just right. That's finger tight, and that slides pretty nicely. So I'm going to See how good it is by putting the putting the wrench to it. Get those nice and snug. I don't know what the torque torque spec is for these, so they're just going to get nice and cinched. Now I've got those really tight, and this is see it's holding itself up that's a little still a little too tight now be careful when you're tightening this for the first couple of times because if you don't have enough shims and there's some wobble if you tighten these down too much it'll bend the uh the cap and either break the cap or it might break an ear off the connecting rod or it just won't be good, so be careful. Take a little bit at a time and you can't rush it. I've also ground grease grooves in these Babbitt bearings and make sure 
if your engine is so equipped, which most of these are, if you have a grease cup, there's going to be a grease hole in your connecting rod. Make sure to drill a hole through that babbit where the grease comes out and gr uh, grind some grooves with something like this, a little uh, rotary file, carbide burr, that works pretty well. If you use a stone, a grinding stone on a drum, it'll work, but it'll load up the, load up the stone. So I ground my grease grooves, I drilled my grease hole, so I'm all set. There's a small booklet available about Babbitt bearings. I bought it. It was uh, somewhat enlightening. So uh, it was only $5 to so buy it if you're interested. So uh, now I tightened, tightened these down nice and firm. And you see it. I'm just letting gravity pull it down. It's a little little stiff here, but it's still moving. That feels pretty good. Now another thing, when you're at this point, I wobble it side to side right now and it's pretty slight. You might be able to see that. There's always, there's going to be some play, you can only get it so perfect. But that's the basics of it. So I like this. This, it's a, I feel a little bit of resistance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it back and forth a couple times. And I like that number of shims, I'm going to put my shims away. I have my little box. I don't know where I put the lid, I'll just put this side over here. So, I moved it back and forth a couple times, and that made scuff marks on the Babbitt. And I could just run it as it is, and let it break in on its own. I'm trying to show you the, let's see if I'll make it focus. You'll see right along there, there's a shiny spot, which is where it's wearing, where it's rubbing against, and also there. These other dark spots, these larger dark spots, um, we're already on the bearing. <clears throat> so what I'll do now, again a little bit of back and forth. Um, I have used just a knife to scrape away the high spots. And there are all things called Babbitt scrapers. This is this is one. I've got a couple of them. And you just use that bottom edge to kind of um, scrape out the high spots. And the nice curved edges lend, themse lend itself a little better to scraping Babbitt as opposed to that pocket knife. So I might Whittle, whittle away a little bit here. This is actually pretty dull. It doesn't cut too well. But I might scrape away some of the high spots. Because if I put this on an engine, and just run it as it is, 
these two spots here are going to wear very fast because all the load is, all the wear is just focused on these two spots. So it's going to break in really fast and then it's also going to become loose really fast. So if you get the contact over a larger surface area, that bearing is going to stay adjusted for a much longer, for a much longer period of time. So once again, the extra time you spend here on the bench, fiddling and scraping and tightening and untightening, it'll pay off. It'll pay off in the long run. So what I would do, I'd, I'll scrape away on this a little bit. I'll put it back on, tighten it down, move the connecting rod, and take the cap back off, look for wear spots, and see what it looks like. So I'm going to finish it up off camera. Uh, that's as far as I know, that's all there is to it. Leave a comment, leave a suggestion. And as always, thanks for watching and come back for more.